Salt. We have all heard that old twin refrain, lower your salt and you'll reduce blood pressure. Immediately followed by, reduced blood pressure cuts heart disease and saves thousands of lives. Why don't they simply say lowering salt will cut heart disease and save thousands of lives? It's because two half-truths don't make a whole truth. Why is that? It's because of the renin angiotensin system, or RAS, RAS, Mother Nature's way to make up for inadequate salt or sodium chloride consumption. When any one of our body's sensors detect that we're not getting enough salt, the RAS kicks in to make sure that the kidney reabsorbs sodium and water back into the blood. Unfortunately, even though the RAS helps us make up for too little salt consumption, it does so at a heavy cost to our health. Elevated RAS levels cause metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, cardiovascular disease, and a host of other serious conditions. Elevated RAS is a very serious risk factor for overall health. So anyone who cuts salt to reduce blood pressure ends up increasing their risk for other diseases. Trading off one risk factor for another is no different than robbing Peter to pay Paul. Now take a look at this diagram. It shows that when we cut our sodium, the renin in our plasma shoots up dramatically. It's the body's normal response when you don't get enough salt. Once our sodium falls below 150 millimoles of sodium per day, or 3,450 milligrams, the body reacts by producing high levels of renin. The blue level, or approximately 9 grams of salt, is close to the average American consumption and is enough to prevent any spike in RAS activity. But wait a minute. The dietary guidelines recommend that we drop our consumption down to 2,300 milligrams of sodium. At this level, the orange line, renin begins to rise rapidly. And to make matters worse, the guidelines go on to say that more than half the Americans should go even lower, down to 1,500 milligrams of sodium. At this red line level, renin spikes up dramatically. So while I don't question the benefits of reducing blood pressure, cutting your salt is a very poor and potentially dangerous way of going about it. There are much better lifestyle strategies to reduce blood pressure, such as more physical exercise or the adoption of a Mediterranean diet. They have no negative side effects. But when you choose to reduce your salt, it stimulates the RAS and results in a cascade of negative consequences. Now, for salt-sensitive people, trading one risk factor for another is a zero-sum bargain. But for the rest of us, it's nothing more than a rip-off, an increased health risk with no benefits whatsoever. For example, a very recent study from the Harvard Medical School demonstrated that when healthy people were placed on a low-salt diet, they developed insulin resistance within seven days. So while reducing blood pressure can be useful, what's even more important is how you go about doing it. For those scientists who have taken the trouble to do the research, there is a mountain of evidence showing the serious negative consequences of going on a low-salt diet. Here are just a few that have been published recently. Insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, congestive heart failure, diabetes 1 mortality, diabetes 2 mortality, cardiovascular events, iodine deficiency diseases, loss of cognition, and death. It's vitally important for consumers to understand that the best way to ensure a healthful life is to eat a balanced diet with plenty of salads and vegetables. Make sure you get enough exercise and don't forget the salt. When faced with public health bureaucrats that prefer to deal in half-truths, it's up to consumers to connect the dots correctly. After all, when all is said and done, it's your ass. Salt!